everybody thank you so much for <laughs> joining me today i see we already have some lovey from soggy south carolina joining us anyone else that wants to you know say hello please feel free in the chat and i'm really excited specifically today to talk about habits presentations called take charge of your habits change your life that's something i really believe and i see as possible for so many people so i really want this to be interactive and if at any moment you have a question, put it in the chat and I'll try to address it. And we're also going to be doing some interactive activities. So let's get started. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to just click to the next. Great. So just a short little introduction. I'm Robin. Who am I? I am a health coach. Oh, it's covered up a little bit. I am a health coach that specifically works on creating positive, healthy habits. Uh, a lot of times we know theoretically what we should be doing, but it's hard to actually, actually implement that into our lives. So that's something I help people do. I'm also a founder of a tech company that's working to build tools to support bariatric patients in their lifestyle changes. And that's something I love to talk about. I love to hear different people's thoughts on. So if at the end of it, this you think, let's connect, I'm gonna put my email at the very end and please reach out, I would love to connect. Hello everyone, I like everyone's pouring in. Amazing. So that's me, but we're not actually here to talk about me. We're here to talk about habits and why habits are so important. So habits actually make up the majority of our day. We go through life in pretty consistent routines from day to day and week to week, and some of our habits are conscious others are subconscious but they make up so much of our time that i think it's important that we all begin to understand how to guide our habits so that we are really guiding the trajectory of our life uh, because if we're not taking those conscious actions to do so then we'll just fall into these patterns um, that might lead us somewhere positive sometimes but a lot of times can also lead us to negative places and we'll touch upon that in a bit so that's habits I'm going to pull a lot of this content from one of my all-time favorite books, Atomic Habits by James Clear. He's truly a great writer on all things habit formation. He also has a blog. So if anyone has not read this book, I highly recommend reading it. And if you have read this book, don't worry, this presentation and session will still be useful because we're actually going to take moments to reflect and write for ourselves um, so that you know, even if you have read the book, you'll walk away with some really useful practical tips to, you know, start working on your habits again. Um, so just be mindful that a lot of this is from this book and you can learn more by reading the book. Okay, so a little bit of an outline of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be going through the difference between goals and systems. Then we're going to talk about four laws of behavior change. This will give you a nice framework to actually change um, your behavior and work on cultivating more positive habits and then we're gonna get super practical and reflect on how you can take action today to change maybe one habit that's really been something you've been struggling with before we get really started I would love if everyone grabs just took 30 seconds to grab a piece of paper and a pen because we're gonna be going through a lot of information and it's great if you can actually come away with, from this session with some valuable reflections. So not just notes perhaps, but actually moments where I'll ask you to reflect and write stuff down that's u unique to you and no one else. Um, so this is really for you. And with that, I'd say, let's get started. Goals versus systems. So this is a fundamental principle that James Clear talks about in his book, Atomic Habits. And the reason I think he really highlights it is that so often in our society, we are so focused on goals, the gold medal, the promotion, running that marathon. But very often we are not so focused on the systems, the consistent effort and work that we do to get to those goals. And there's a number of reasons why it can be helpful to focus on systems over goals. Firstly, a goal may seem very overwhelming at first. So here's an example. A goal, I want to run a marathon. For many people, that seems extremely overwhelming and 
focusing on a goal doesn't really give light to all the little steps that it would take to get to that goal. Secondly, goals have an end point, an expiration date. You know, once you've run the marathon, you've achieved that goal. But really, I think most of us in this room are looking for long-term lifestyle changes that are going to continue to feed our mind and body and just generally our whole life wellness. And that's something that doesn't have an end date. It's something that we weave into our lives. And this is where systems can be super helpful. So in this example, I want to run a marathon. The systems that, that, are, you going, that are going to get you there are going running every morning or several times a week, eating well, prioritizing sleep, investing in quality running gear, joining running groups, etc. And these are all behaviors that together make it a lot easier to achieve that goal. But they're also behaviors that don't have an end date. They're just systems that you're building into your life that can live on after you achieve any number of specific goals, whether that's a marathon or something else. So that's a distinction between goals and systems. And it's a shift that I would like you to maybe have in the back of your mind as we talk about different things today. So I'd like us all to take one moment on our piece of paper and think about a goal that we've been working on or that you want to start working on and then break that down into a number of systems to support that goal. Either these systems are things you're doing now or maybe things you want to do or you think you should be doing, but just what are all the little baby steps and daily habits and cycles that can actually get you to that goal? So let's all take a moment to really write this down. And I mean, literally write it down. I'm gonna be doing this as well alongside you. And I'm gonna give us about one minute to do this thoroughly. And I promise this will be really helpful to walk away from the session with a sheet of paper filled with a list. I'm going to be doing this as well. Jotting down any last systems that come to mind. Wonderful. And if you feel like there's still more to write later, we can definitely get to it. Um, I love, thank you so much for sharing exercise and getting muscles. Yes. <laughs> Um, I, I would love you, for everyone to be sharing some of their answers in the chat because this really helps to also give perspective to what other people are working on, accountability, putting it out there in the world, um, making it known that you want these things. So I love it. Uh, mine is also fitness related. Okay. So now that we've maybe took a moment to write some systems down, let's keep going. We'll get back to that. So really systems are made of habits. You can see a number of things you're writing down are probably things you wanna be doing consistently on a daily, weekly basis. But what actually makes up a habit? What are the ingredients of a habit? And this is where I'm gonna pull the definition from Atomic Habits. A habit is a behavior loop with four stages. A cue, a craving, a response, and a reward. Now, it's so powerful to really think of how a habit is made because then we can understand when habits aren't working for us, how we can change that. And when we don't seem to be able to adopt a habit, how we can work on these four parts. So, hello, hello. Thank you, everyone. Hi, welcome. So these four parts really kind of create a cycle. Q is what gets your attention. So we'll do a classic example of a hot steaming plate of cookies on the counter. Mm -hmm. That is a cue. That <laughs> is a cue that gets sweet. What? <laughs> What's that? 
<clears throat> I said that was the first thing I thought of was sweet. It's classic because we're human. My it's literally in our brains, but I think it really, so we're going to also talk about different types of habits later on. <clears throat> it really connects to each of us very deeply from when we were little. You see the cookies, it immediately um, brings on a craving and that craving is sometimes almost instantaneous. It's our brain predicting what that key means. And sometimes this is even so fast, it's subconscious. We might even start salivating just seeing the sight of those cookies. <laughs> After a craving comes the response, the actual behavior. So in this case, you maybe go eat a bite of that cookie. And then the reward is that immediate benefit that is, and I have immediate here because that's what really solidifies a habit loop from, from uh, strengthening is the sooner that benefit comes after the response, the stronger that connection will be in the brain. So in this case, it's the taste of the sugary cookie. That's kind of a natural dopamine kick in our brains. And then that will solidify that this cue brings on this craving, response, and reward, and it becomes a little loop. So that is the architecture of a habit. But now I want to talk about, so this, in this example, I was talking about cookies. <laughs> And this is maybe a habit loop we want to avoid if we're focusing on our long-term health. And this is where it's good to recognize that all behaviors produce various outcomes across time. That might sound a little bit complicated, but really what it's saying is there's the immediate outcome. So in this case, eating that cookie and tasting the sugar, that was a positive experience. But there's a long-term outcome that may be contributing to you know, negative health, to putting us at risk for diabetes or other things that we don't actually want for our body. And that is then a negative outcome. So a single behavior can have both, you know, a certain type of immediate outcome and a certain type of long-term outcome. And thinking about it this way, James Clear makes a very interesting distinction between good habits and bad habits. And he says that good habits are often the habits where the immediate outcome of doing that behavior is often not that nice. Like you go to the gym, you're sweaty, you kind of want to puke, your muscles are aching, but the long-term outcome of that habit is that you feel amazing. You, you know, over the course of many weeks and consistently working out, you start to feel strong, you start to feel mentally clear. And with bad habits, it's often the other way around, that the immediate outcome of eating that cookie or watching that you know, reality TV show that maybe you don't want to be watching, but you are, that that gives that a dopamine <laughs> rush, but in the long term is sacrificing your health or maybe detracting from things you actually want to be doing, um, your longer term, bigger health and wellness goals. So just knowing that a lot of the habits that come easily in the immediate, maybe don't always serve us in the long run, and the things that serve us in the long run might have those immediate outcomes which don't feel as you know immediate as the bad habits do, but just knowing that and designing systems to get around that can be really powerful. So even though we've made this distinction between good habits and bad habits, I think it's important to highlight that it's usually most helpful to focus on creating good habits that can crowd out our less positive habits. In general, you know, I don't like to label things as good and bad because life is a transient thing. There's mm -hmm. all sorts of shades. Um, that's just an example he gives in the book, but I don't really like to think of good and bad. It's really how can you cultivate more positive habits so that that takes up the space in your day and is filling the behaviors of your life. So I think that's an important distinction to make. So now we want to return to our sheet of paper and take for a moment what positive habit would you like to work on building? One choice today, and that's really important to not overwhelm ourselves. This can maybe be from your systems list or it can be something completely unrelated, but something that you're declaring today, I would like to work on cultivating this positive habit. So let's all take 30 seconds to write that down as well. I will do the same.
Okay. So if everyone feels like I'm just look in the chat, healthy eating, I love it. Making sure you're eating your veggies. That's such a good example of including more veggies. No junk in the grocery cart that you guys already are in the right mindset because I'm going to touch upon a few things later, but no junk in the grocery cart is a great one. Make it easy for yourself to, to eat well. Yeah. Love it. So if everyone has really chosen their single habit, let's continue on with this habit in mind. So now we're going to get into the actual four laws of behavior change that are really going to help you create an architecture in your life that supports your healthy habit of choice. So in the Atomic Habits book, he describes four laws of behavior change that correlate to the four steps of a habit loop. So the first step was Q. So if you want to start a habit, you need to work on making it obvious so that you have that cue. Maybe if you want to be working out, you have your running shoes in sight, ready to go, or you have your workout clothes or something to just remind you, hey, this is something that's, you know, in my radar of things I want to do. The second part of the habit loop was craving. The behavior change that goes along with that is making it attractive. So to stick out with the workout theme, maybe having a really attractive, fun playlist ready to go, you've got some workout clothes that make you feel pumped and ready to move, make it an attractive experience, whatever that looks like for you. The third um, part of the habit loop is then response and the cor correlating law of behavior change is to make it easy. This means to lower the resistance and maybe that means literally carving out a time in your schedule to make it easy, having everything ready to go, as few barriers as possible to actually just make the habit the path of least resistance. So really focusing on taking out all the frictions so you can actually do that behavior. And lastly, the reward that correlates with making it satisfying. And as I said earlier, a lot of those healthy habits don't necessarily have that strong immediate reward. So finding ways to really make that end point of your habit really positive, whether that's again, listening to amazing music, walking in beautiful scenery that makes you happy, um, having a delicious cup of coffee in the sun, find some sort of reward it can be attached to the habit or not, but that just makes it satisfying that you got to do this thing and now you get to have the reward. So those are the four laws of behavior change as he writes it. And now within the context of the habit we've written, <coughs> I'd like us all to reflect upon these four questions. How can I make this obvious? How can I make it attractive? How can I make it easy? And how can I make it satisfying? Now, I know someone mentioned, for example, no junk in the grocery cart. That's actually feeding into, you know, not making it easy to eat junk because it's not in your house. Um, so maybe the correlation of then eating good foods and choosing good foods, how can you make it obvious to remind yourself to eat those good foods? How can you make it attractive, easy, and satisfying? So let's all take a little bit of time. This is really where planning is wonderful because if you have this clear in your mind, you can actually set up your environment to work for you so that when you're feeling lazy, the healthy choice is the choice that it's set up to be made without much resistance. So let's all take a moment to really add these questions for it to give us a few minutes for the
I do want to also note that in his book, he talks about um, sometimes not all four of these are really easy to control. And mm -hmm. he recommends focusing on number one and number three, because sometimes you can't always make it super satisfying. You can't always make it attractive, but making it obvious. So setting clear cues around your environment and also making it easy as in literally setting up your environment to do that thing is usually you have a little bit more control over. So if you feel like you can't answer all the questions, that's okay. They're good to just think about. Um, but one and three are really strong entry points to start to work on a new habit. I don't think that we have any questions, but um, excuse me, Brenda, I wasn't able to pull up Facebook. I was. I'm on there right now. Okay. I just want to make sure yes. I should Great. do we're asking. Yeah, I don't have any questions now, but if you're on Facebook watching us, let us know. Like if Hello. you have, you want to, you want to comment or anything and I'll pass those along to Robin. Yes, yes, please. I, as interactive, the more interactive, the better. Um, yeah, so I'll give us about one more minute to just really think about this. This is work that we're doing today so that it's a little bit easier for us to stick to those habits tomorrow. Um, so let's just take another moment to answer this and then we'll continue. All right. So I'm going to continue now. Um, but you have these four questions. We can circle back to it as well. Um, oh, wow. Look at this. Rhonda has an idea to order online, then have someone check your cart and delete unhealthy items. You guys are already thinking of great systems to... Yeah, that's genius. Yeah. <clears throat> One thing I want to say, too, about mm -hmm. that is I feel like that's probably one of the biggest things that I've noticed for myself with changing mm -hmm. some kind of unhealthy habit, um, like food-wise or whatever. If I don't have it at my home or in front of me, like it's not obvious because you are you don't have yes. it in front of you. It's not easy. Yes, exactly. Those two things make such a difference. Like if I, like for one of my biggest pitfalls is chips. So if I don't have them at my house, if I don't have them in front of me, Yes. You really, they're not going to be accessible. So it's less likely that you're going to be having those things. So I'm glad you shared that. Again, making it not obvious and not easy are two of the most powerful ones of this list. So I love that example. Um, just good questions to have in the back of your mind. Let's continue on. And then I hope, oops, we can have a, you know, Q&A and more of an interactive discussion. So just in you know i already mentioned that i don't really like to focus on good versus bad habits and really just try to cultivate more positive habits but if you are really thinking of this is a habit that i just have been wanting to kick for so long then um james clear recommends doing the literal opposite of these four steps make it invisible so like you guys were saying you know it's literally not there it doesn't exist make it unattractive in some way um, make it difficult and make it unsatisfying. So there's a number of examples, but if, you know, off the top of my head, if you want to stop watching TV, but your, you know, entire living room is set up perfectly to essentially made to watch a lot of TV, you can actually put your TV into a cupboard so that you'll have to open the cupboard or unplug it or put the remote in a different place. Just making these little points of friction so that you can still do that activity, but it just, you really have to have a clear reason why you want to do it and it becomes a little bit more conscious and less mindless. Um, so that's an example, but uh, just thinking about that if you really have a bad habit you want to kick, just doing the opposite of the good is really powerful. And again, focusing on number one and number three is probably going to be the easiest point of entry. I love the protein snacks. Protein is amazing at 
keeping us full, managing our blood sugar, amazing. You guys are great. So now I wanna take a little moment to talk about how to take action today. This is really important because often we think about all the things we wanna do, but really taking action is what it comes down to because our actions are what determine where we're headed. So here are a few examples of ways today you can take action um, is to literally restructure your environment. And so a lot of the habits we have right now are part of the environment that we've created for ourselves and are attached to cues. If And that can be great. So for me, I like to have my yoga mat literally as part of my environment as that cue. But if there's something that's not working for you, think about how you can restructure your environment to make that harder. And if there's something you want to do, think about how you can restructure your environment to make that a little bit easier. Also calling a friend or loved one and telling them what you're working on can, you know, social accountability can be so helpful to not only have that support from someone else, um, but to just have that feeling, you know, we're social creatures that we told someone we would do this. So yes, we deserve to stick to our word um, because they love us, we love ourselves. And that's just, it, it really helps that accountability. And lastly, and this is maybe where you can also think about the specific habit you're focusing on, pick your time, place, and circumstance. So if, you know, even after this session, you can just make very clear when am I going to do this? What is the circumstance in which I'm going to do this? Even, you know, the little details of the time of day or after I drink my coffee, I'm going to take this many sips of water. Just really having it clear in your mind. We're also such visual creatures. So having that visualization of when you're going to doing it, do it, see yourself in your mind doing it and loving it. That's a, such a powerful thing I often do for myself and do with my clients is literally just visualizing yourself doing that action and having a really good time doing it is weirdly powerful. Um, and then most importantly, I think deciding today which baby step will be your focus. I think so many of us here are so, you know, already focused on our health and it can be almost exhausting and overwhelming to be working on this and this and this. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I think people, <clears throat> everyone feel a little guilty if they're just doing one thing or a little bit, but actually baby steps going back to the goals versus the systems, those baby steps make up systems that ultimately make it easier to achieve those really big goals. So today, if you're feeling brave, you know, write out a little baby step that you're going to be focusing on. You can put it in the chat or write it on your sheet. And that's where I would love to bring us to the last reflection period. What is that one thing? And it can be so small. It can just be, you know, if you want to start a morning walk habit, it can be putting on your shoes, stepping outside for five minutes, coming back in the door. That is a great starting point. It's building that habit from a certain moment in your day that you can later expand on. So what's that one thing you're gonna do today so to support your healthy habit you're focusing on and maybe something in the course of a week because not all habits might be on a daily basis. So let's t I'll take a moment, another last minute to really write out in detail what it's gonna look like, the time, the place, that one thing you're gonna do today or this week. Let's all write that down. Oops. Amazing. And I would really love to invite you all to if you're feeling brave share it in the chat obviously no obligation this is a session for you and only you and to create you know your own little roadmap for success but um we're i hope everyone here is you know yeah feeling like 
they're supported and loved and this is a really safe space. Um, yeah, great. I love that. Feed it to your kids. Totally agree. I don't have kids, but I plan to <laughs> sneak in as many vegetables as I can, but maybe that's uh, being ambitious for <laughs> having kids of my own. <laughs> the separate cupcake make it obvious, you know, that's the first one. Yes. Make exactly. it exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. <clears throat> okay, so to summarize before we just go into a little bit more of an open discussion, habits they make up most of our lives, but you can really take charge of your habits and that can really in turn change your life and I highly recommend people read Atomic Habits. They could also, I want you to feel free to reach out to me. I love talking all things habits, um, but at the very least, I hope this little exercise of writing some of these things out, focusing on making it obvious and making it easy, can just give that little extra boost today or this week to work on what maybe has been in the back of your mind, but hasn't just come to be a priority. So, um, oh, my email is a little obscured, but I can also put that in the chat. I will. Yeah. Um, oops, here we go. I want everyone to feel welcome to email me, and that can be in terms of habits. That can also be in terms of interesting technology that they would love to see. So a little bit of context for my business. We're creating tools, uh, self-monitoring tools. So that's whether that's you know tracking your protein, your water, um, your uh, supplement log, making really easy user-friendly tools, as well as connecting people to each other. So creating bariatric buddy systems and also connecting people to fun and useful content. And I would love to hear anyone's feedback of things that they feel like they're missing areas in their life where they could use a little bit more support. That's always really enjoyable for me to hear and hopefully we can do something about it. So that was my run through the habits. Um, oops, yeah. And I would love to now take any questions from the audience about even very specific habits or maybe, uh, you know, the book anything I've said that seems confusing that I can clarify. So if there are any questions at all, I would love to answer those now. Hi, proud um, I can try to pull Facebook real quick. Yeah, maybe, I hope I, I don't see anything. Here. I don't okay. see anything over there right now, but <clears throat> I feel like, um, it looks like there was a, there's a comment here that I'm going to kind of like mention. It looks like yeah. um, Nancy says, "Looking in the mirror where I was before clothing size, keep up with my walking, 2,000 steps or more." So, so yeah, I mean, I feel like some of the things here that people, um, some of the people are talking about is um, maybe their eating styles. Because I mean, obviously, this is kind of this is yeah. kind of a forum where we talk about, yes. you know, bariatric lifestyle changes and things like yes. that. So, um, and fitness, um, eating, all of those kind of things. Um, Enid is asking, this is off the subject of that, but are the protein samples available? Brittany, do you happen to know, I have not heard that we have gotten those in yet. No. Her volume is, Brittany, your volume is not working or something. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I just turned it down a little bit. I don't know if maybe it was too loud. Sorry, it's different today, guys. I'm on my phone. My computer was updating. Um, yes, we have not gotten protein samples in just yet. Uh, as soon as we do, I foresee us sending out an email to let customers know or, or patients know. Um, and then we'll also probably put something on um, our Instagram and Facebook, whether it be like a story or a graphic. We'll, we will definitely announce that because I know a lot of people are looking forward to those um, those samples. But I also did want to let you guys know that 
right now we do have an introductory price for our new protein too. Oh, I don't have it up here. I'll show you the bag. <laughs> um, and that is going to be a limited price until this protein, until this, uh, this lot of protein is gone. So take advantage of the price while you can. Um, and I'll definitely let you, you guys know about samples. But in the meantime, if you're new to ProCare Health, um, we do offer free samples of our multivitamin and our calcium supplements. It also will include some kind of protein sample. It just won't be our new way isolate protein, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks, Brittany. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it looks Here like we have a comment. Yeah, Rhonda, who shares that lately a lot of some of those old habits are resurfacing under a lot of stress. Help. Yeah, um, I think this is something that everyone can relate to under stress. Our habits, our old habits bubble up. And I would love to know if there's a specific positive habit you are working on cultivating or maybe something that you're working on eliminating. And then maybe we can walk through those four steps, which is not only helpful for hopefully you, but for everyone listening in. Um, to quickly touch upon Nancy's comment about 2,000 steps or more, I would love to know some of the things that Nancy might be doing to make it um, easy and accessible, putting out her running shoes or walking shoes. Um, and also maybe making it very satisfying by having a nice end to a walk. Love to hear it. Okay, yes. Bringing sweets in the house. Okay, great. So wondering we can even use that as an example we can go back up to all the Let's see if i can go back through the presentation because i think this is something you know where humans that are kind of evolved to love sweet things so it's something everyone can that's my weakness yeah so here we look at the good habits and the bad habits um so bringing sweets into the house. Now it sounds like the actual bringing into the house is the issue. So maybe to make that invisible and, and difficult, it's not driving certain routes where you know you will pass that place that you've habitually gone to. Maybe it's not entering certain stores where you tend to buy very specific treats so, you know, in the original example, we just said not bringing sweets into the house, but maybe the actual act of bringing sweets into the house is something that's hard. And then you can take a few steps back. How can you make that difficult? How can you make that invisible? And this is also where going back to the idea of restructuring your environment. You know, I gave an example of maybe moving your TV into a cupboard, but restructuring your environment can also be changing the shops you shop in changing the way that you drive home from work. Literally just having a new space where old habits are not as prevalent and strong, that pull. Is it normal? Yeah, great. So we, we have people answering the chat. Um, and bringing, I need to start journaling again. I've taken it for granted. Yes, yeah, so journaling, and I think this goes back to goals and systems systems are with us for the long haul it's not you know often especially with weight goals you might hit a certain target and then it's like oh i accomplished this goal but it's actually never about the goal it's always about the systems that are keeping us in a healthy state where we feel strong we feel good mentally and so the i think the idea also that we reach something and then can stop is 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 misplaced because just like retaining muscle in our body retaining a resilient mindset takes consistent work and you have to strengthen that muscle so journaling is something i love i work with a lot of clients on journaling definitely rhonda um i think it's a great place to to start rebuilding that mental strength many events church family and work this is another one where it can be really hard to sometimes control the environment when you are going to other people's places, when you are 
in another space where socially some things might be expected from you. I think um, it depends on what is difficult about those situations. If it's very much a social pressure that you feel, then perhaps also acknowledging that to the people that are around you, telling them what you're working on. Again, it might not always be socially accepted. Um, so then it might also be about making choices of putting yourself in situations where you aren't having to <laughs> use too, too much willpower. And, um, you know, if, if it feels like a place where there's going to be food that you maybe wouldn't normally choose to put in your body, sometimes making sure you have a meal, you know, outside of the event ready so that you can still eat the foods that make you feel good to fuel yourself um, and just get getting a little bit of control over the situation when you can. But I, I can understand that, you know, when you're not in charge, I think, yeah. So definitely, definitely experience that. Um, I really want to thank you all who have been posting in the chat. I think it's always really helpful to hear real examples and to walk through that. I wish I could also see your responses and your faces. That makes it <laughs> a little bit um, easier. Um, I'm trying to scroll through these comments. What else do we have? If anybody's watching us too from Facebook and they have anything they want to say, please feel free to add in the chat box. We're watching that as well. So I don't see anything there right now. Okay, great. So yes, this um, have uh, either of you read Atomic Habits or have any thought? I would love to hear also both of your thoughts on, you know, so the topics I, we've been through. I yeah. have personally not, but mm -hmm. um, lately I've been trying to do a lot of personal, you know, growth. Not necessarily fitness goals, just trying to be a better human, you know? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's all so interconnected. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I would love to order that book. I wrote down the name of the title, so I'll probably buy it uh, after this call in, on Amazon or something. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. I did write down, um, so if anyone's curious, my goal was to just be happier. And, you know, that can be kind of a complex thing. A lot of mm -hmm. things can go into it. Um, but I think that just being more active and if I were to lose maybe 10 to 15 pounds, ultimately that it would make me happier, yes. <laughs> so what I did is I focused on what can I do daily. I can take my yes. dog for a short walk after my meetings or I, you know, I have the privilege of working from home so I can just take a 20, 30 minute break and go walk her outside and, um, and to make it obvious, I can leave her leash out because my dog will not let me forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then to make it more attractive, um, she'll be tired and she'll be more happy. Hopefully, I will be more happy as well. Yes. Make it, it easy. We'll just do it every day on my lunch break. What's easier than that? And then more satisfying. Um, I like to listen to true crime podcasts. A little fun fact about Brittany. Yes. So I'm going to download one of my favorite podcasts and listen to a little bit of their episode. Luckily, their episodes are nice and long. So <laughs> that'll kind of encourage example. me to keep going. Yes. I, I love how you had this bigger goal of being happier and then you really got down to the nitty gritty because that's, like you said, such a complex, multidimensional thing. So realizing that at lunch, a daily walk, with your dog and all of these things to make it satisfying with true crime. It's perfect plan. I love it. And I wish you lots of uh, fun and enjoyment on your walk with your dog and you. true crime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Robin, it. could you share that book again? Like, I know it was one of your very first slides, but there might yes. be some people that might have joined. Yes. Um, I got on late. Yeah, some people hop on and off these calls, so it's probably important to yeah, share Yeah, so um, I think this is a great book 
to read. I also highly recommend, just like you were sharing true crime podcasts, doing audibles and then walking and, you know, having little bite-sized pieces of this book just on a different walk is what I love. If you feel like you're really crunched for time, just remember James Clear, the author, and type his name into podcast platforms. Listen to him speak. He's super duper inspiring, very intelligent, and he can also, in very concise ways in a lot of these episodes, talk about a lot of the things that I've talked about here. And, you know, the book isn't too, too long. I think it's 200-something pages, but oh, yeah, still... Okay. If sometimes if you find like you don't have the time to, to actually read it, listen to some podcasts in which he's featured on and interviewed in, and I promise you will learn something and you will also be inspired uh, because it's you know it it's um, I think a big thing behind a lot of his philosophies is to make the good choice that you consciously want to make the path of least resistance. And you can do that by really engineering your environment and, um, you know, the cues and the rewards that you get from different behaviors. So that, hopefully everyone can see that. Um, One thing I want to say, too, about this is I feel like the baby steps, like this is something that we've talked about, like with... Um, with eating or doing, making any kind of change. And I'm going to say even down to the level of making it so micro, like let's yes. say you're wanting to change your eating habits and you think you might want to talk to a dietitian. You can even get into the um, smallest baby step of like investigating programs yes. that have dietitians or yes. in that it, are like, Thinking about yes. what ty- like what types of other support, like that might be a baby step, like just the tiniest, tiniest little steps. I'm so glad you brought up this point because I think it's a really underrated point. And I actually remember so clearly the example in the book that he gave of a baby step is that he was helping a friend start to get to the gym and he had a really resistant like a strong resistance against the gym i think so many people can relate to that Mm -hmm. and he actually told him for the first days you are not even going to step into the gym you are going to put on your shoes drive to the gym and drive back home that's it that's all you have to do just make that a part of your routine and so for literally weeks he was driving to the gym and driving back and it was just became a standard part of his routine in the morning. He had his coffee, he drove there, drove back. Then the next step was literally stepping into the gym for two minutes, but no no more than two minutes. Two minutes was all, stepping out. And, And it sounded kind of crazy if you thought about how long he did these baby steps, but by the end of it, getting to the gym, spending five minutes of doing, you know, abs and going home, was like second nature to him and he slowly just built a little bit more and so his um you know his point with this story was to first standardize the habit so make it a standard part of your routine and then optimize the habit and slowly over time you can tweak it and take another little baby step forward but i think it's so powerful because sometimes we are all just prone to this all or nothing attitude Mm -hmm. like I have to go to the gym and I have to do an hour of crazy cardio and lift these weights. And when in reality that, um, you know, the novelty of new habits wears off. And if we haven't first standardized this baby step, then it's not going to stay with us in the long term. So I, I do this all the time. I, you know, I go in and out of phases with yoga and yoga makes me feel really good in my mind. So recently to get back into it, I literally just lay out my yoga mat spend two minutes on it oh it's done and it's so easy i don't have any mental resistance towards it and now that i've you know gotten that going i can do a little bit longer and it just slowly weaves its way in and you have a really much more positive relationship to that thing that you're trying to do yeah um ramsey's snowball system i don't know this i would love to know you're gonna look this up but start oh that's um that's the financial freedom Dave Ramsey's program oh, with the. I think Brenda did that. Yeah, I did that too, and honestly, it was one of the biggest life changers. 
Yeah, I Rhonda. Love, I love it. Thank you for sharing that, Rhonda. I, now I have something <coughs> to look into as well. Ramsey's snowball system. But again, yeah, little things add up. And so even, you know, just celebrating those little wins um, is so important. And making that satisfying. Yes, you drove to the gym and back. Great job. You know. <laughs> Financial yeah. peace. Okay, that's so everyone's gonna be reading Atomic Habits, and I'm gonna be reading Financial Peace. Thank you so much. I love that's it. Great though. Yeah. It's like a, our book club. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so much, and I think this goes back to the point of Rhonda was making um, with getting back into journaling, but. Just like journaling, you know, reading books or consuming podcasts that really support that positive place we want to be in mentally is something we really have to continue to do because, you know, it's it's just like your muscle, your brain needs to be worked and nur nourished with these positive thoughts mm -hmm. and, you know, whether it's finances or habits, I think it's great. Well, before we kind of close yeah. off too, guys, here, I wanted to, um, so Robin, I want to kind of like kind of reiterate how like they can get a hold of you if they want to yes. contact you. And we, we posted your email um, address um, for them to be able Thank to do you. that. And second of all, is there anything that you, like I know that you, you do have clients. Is there anything that maybe promotionally that you want to say about what you do before we because yeah. we also want to talk about um something with procare here but we want to um i see yeah yeah sure so i really came on today to just share a little bit about habits but if anyone really feels like they need a little more structure and that cheerleader that person is going to dive deep um to really create an architecture in their life that supports the habits they want. I'm your person, so reach out to me by email and we can set up a call and get into the nitty gritty of what you're working on. Uh, so I think if you've, my email was a little cut off on the last slide, so if it's somewhere, it's just, you know, I'll put it once more in the chat, robin.ann.laird at gmail.com, it's just my name. And, um, I really, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, send that message. It won't let me send it again. Sorry. <laughs> Interesting. Um, anyways, I really focus on making actual behavior change possible. That's what I love to do. And I think so often we have the idea of where we want to go. It's just not, it seems like it's not falling into place. And that's where I can help pick up those pieces. So. I'm happy to chat and to jump on a call with you if you have anything in that nature that you'd like to work on. And I really appreciate you joining me and I appreciate the great conversation and the resources in the chat. Thank you. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me. Also ProCare, I, your team is amazing and I appreciate the support. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much Robin for, for all of that and thank you for sharing about this book and about habits because it's just um it's just so wonderful so robin also i don't know if you um wanted to mention we do she does also have a podcast yes so um that's, that's so true i have many yes. things to mention but um, <laughs> if um yeah if anyone is interested in sharing their story i love to share i love to talk with people, have really intimate conversations, have them open up about their own bariatric journey. If that's something that sounds interesting to you and you'd even be you know, brave enough to share that on podcast, it's a lot of fun. I think it's helped so many people to just hear other people's stories. So reach out to me about that as well. Um, we have a new episode coming up soon on positive psychology with a psychologist. So it's a mixture of all sorts of experts and you know personal patient uh, experiences and if that sounds fun reach out <laughs> basically if you have anything related to this realm reach out to me <laughs> yeah robin what is um it's be healthy right is the name it's of your podcast 
It's called Be Health Curious. We're actually going to change the name to We are We're Health Curious, but right now it's still called Be Health Curious. And they can access that. I'm looking it up right now so that I can post it. Um, let's see. Let's I'm going to probably find a link here as well. Health Curious. I think I found it. <laughs> Yay. Great. Okay. Thank you for getting that in. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm going to post it listen here. To those episodes, um, really beautiful stories in there. Uh, yeah, I always get so inspired by having these conversations. I'm so humbled to share them with people. Okay. So, I thank you. It. Yeah, I'm going to post it on Facebook too. Yeah, thank you. Robin's podcast. Um, so I got that and, um, so if you guys have anything else that you want to share or t mention with Robin, let us know, put it in the, the, um, the chat box, um, before we log off, we do want to also just share, we're starting something new with, um, with our ProCare live events here. We're starting to share just a little bit about, um, our sponsor, a little bit more about our sponsor. Sponsor. So ProCare is our sponsor, and we have Brittany. Would you like for me to screen share the slide, the little slide on yeah, um, our you question don't mind. solution? I just don't have it on my phone. Yeah. So I'm gonna take off the other screen for just a second, and then I'm gonna. You guys are gonna see my sh share me share my screen here for just a second, and I'm gonna go on. Hopefully, I won't pause like I do sometimes. And this is the thing. So I have, can you see my screen? Hopefully. Yes. Um, so what we're kind of like looking at is little questions that have been posed to us, um, like frequently asked questions and things that patients have been asking. So one thing um, that a lot of times people have a hard time with is sleeping. And so we kind of did some research and we found that you know, sleeping is, it's, there's so many different reasons um, that sleep can be an issue. You know, it could be sleep apnea. It could be, um, it could be that your mind is busy. It could be that you're, um, that you're not comfortable, you know, sleep positions are an important thing. But one other thing that we kind of recently kind of clued in on is um, actually vitamins can be a big part of helping making sure like that biorhythm stays effective. So vitamins are pretty important anyways after bariatric surgery. And one of the things that you can do is to assure that you are getting the right amounts of vitamins. Some of the things that um, contribute to health, helpful sleep is Vitamin D, okay, and that's for sleep qual quality and quantity. Um, there's been a lot of research that's been done that kind of shows. So vitamin D is on our bariatric multivitamin too. We also have that in our new, um, our, our calcium chews in our new, um, well, we have cal had, had calcium chews, but we also have some new mocktails. So I'll show you that here in just a moment. Um, it also can be beneficial, the, sleep, the um, vitamin D for bio clock timing. So it helps with your, they call it circadian uh, rhythm, you know, the, the clock inside your body. Um, vitamin E, which helps with memory and it helps with, offers protection for your health and your brain function. Um, vitamin C, it can be helpful for um, basically it helps with those other two things that we just talked about, the sleep quality and quantity, memory, but also can help with, um, linked with, it's linked with the with cardiovascular issues and helps um, with the lining of your blood vessels. Um, so it helps maintain healthy circulation. And then your B vitamins, which helps support immune health and also helps with basically for melatonin and serotonin production. Um, so those are just a few little things. I'm going to kind of stop screen sharing for just a second. Brittany, I don't know if you have the new bottle with you. I'm completely out. I ran out yesterday. We're going to the office tomorrow, so I'm going to get me some more of the new bariatric multivitamins. But um, basically, we also those are also in our regular one-a-days as well, too. 
So I'm going to actually, I'm going to pull up for anybody who might be listening that hasn't ever tried those before or is interested in trying our new um, multivitamins. I have the link pulled up here. I'm going to actually, it's, it's under products, bariatric multivitamin, and then you pull up the new um, multivitamin chew. But if you haven't ever tried us, there is a little link here too for a free sample. And so you can kind of click on there and then you can put in your name, um, just a few little comments, and then just type in here that you want to try the new multivitamin or if there's anything else that you want to try. All of our products are listed under the product section so you can kind of look through those. Um, any questions at all up till now? It looks like I'm looking here to see. No questions. Brittany, do you have anything to add? No, just we do have samples available of the new multivitamin soft chew. I think I heard you say that already, Brenda. Uh -huh. um, and we also, guys, we have new, uh, new, I can't think of the word, flavors. We have new flavors <laughs> for calcium chews. Uh, they are a mocktail version, actually. They're really good. Um, I can click on there. Formula, there's just different flavors. So it comes in a variety bag. You will get all three flavors in one bag. Um, we recently just launched that, um, or at least added to the website. Um, so yeah, if you would like to try any of those new products, you can put that in the chat feature that Brenda showed you, and they'll get you some samples. As long as we have them in stock, we will send them to you. Yeah. And I just wanted to thank Robin one last time. Thank you all for having me and for listening. It's so great. I love when people are coming together and talking about really positive ways to change their life. And like you were saying, you're working on self-development, which can be so much more than just, you know, healthy eating and exercise. So love to surround myself with positive people like all of you. Appreciate being here. Thank you, Robin. And it looks like, um, okay, Rhonda says their products are awesome. Oh, thank you. And then mentions how do you get free samples. So I can show real quick again. If you just basically, it's super easy. You, let me get, have too many screens open, so I'm finding my. <laughs> classic me. Yes. Classic Brenda. <laughs> classic me. I'm always God, doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to the ProCare website, which I'll copy the link here and I'll post it in both Facebook and I'll post it in our chat box. But you yeah. could just go here and then simply just right over here under free sample, you click on that and it's right here. There's a form that you fill out and it's completely free. There is no charge for that whatsoever. So ProCare and then free sample. And then scroll down real quick, if oh, you don't mind. Sure. Because um, maybe they didn't see the the message box. Ooh, it just, it just thundered really loud. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so if you scroll down, yeah, where it says uh, your message, if you type in the specific product or flavor that you want to try, we will do our absolute best to fulfill it um, with whatever products you want to try and make sure that that's included in your sample pack. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we are, I think, at time. So I'm going to mm -hmm. paste the website here. And um, again, Robin, thank you so much. I'm going to be reaching thank out you to you by email after this. Absolutely. I just really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us one more time. You guys are what make this yes. extra special. So and thank hopefully you. I'll meet you in person soon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Brittany, I'm going to... Um, are you going to ASMBS too? I'm not. Robin? Um, I, I haven't decided yet. It might be a little bit tight for me, but it, there's still a chance. <laughs> um, oh. But I, I, I just also wanted to say that everyone who took the time to write down, you know, the certain habit that they're going to focus on and how they're going to make it desirable and easy and uh, obvious. I really hope that you take this to heart and you know, we're here, we're holding you accountable. <laughs> you can do it. So. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>